So um, if you can't kneel, that's totally fine. Um, you can sit any way that you want to, cross-legged, um, legs stretched out, anything that you want to. If kneeling does work for you and you have a yoga block or you might take a blanket and fold it up a couple of times, um, you'll take that right between your heels so that when you sit down, you'll have a little bit of lift for your seat. Um, and that will allow you to perhaps sit a little bit more comfortably. Some of us can sit without it, um, but oftentimes even if we can sit without it, we'll find that there's um, just a little bit more ease to the body if we take a little lift under, underneath our seat. So beginning in Virasana today, um, if that works, and again, if your knees are not feeling kneeling today, then um, sitting in any way that does. And we'll take just a moment here to let ourselves kind of start to arrive. So if you're still kind of coming into the class, um, let yourself get settled. Join us when you're ready. Uh, if it feels comfortable, we'll let our eyes close, knowing that it might also just feel more comfortable to drop your gaze down toward the floor um, or take your gaze to your lap. And then we'll let ourselves take just a couple of breaths, noticing kind of a settling that might start to happen. For some of us, this might be the end of our day. And so just kind of feeling the dropping away of our day as we settle into our seat beginning to notice the weight of the body and feeling into where we're noticing that weight. Perhaps we notice it in our sit bones and a softening of our shoulders and a heaviness of our jaw. As we start to feel this heaviness in different ways in our body, or we might even notice kind of a heaviness, a drop of our breath, or maybe a drop of our thoughts, we can start to think about how this energy can connect us to the first chakra. That's going to be our focus for our practice today is working with the energy of the first chakra, it feels like. Um, particularly right now, there's a lot that we may be holding, um, and so having that ability to kind of come in, get grounded, find foundation with the first chakra um, can feel particularly potent and um, rich at this time. So if you can, particularly those of us who are seated on something firmer like a block, you might start to tilt your pelvis forward and back just a little bit, kind of like a little tiny mini cat cow, feeling into the movement, not only of the pelvis, but particularly if we're seated on something firm, we may start to be able to notice the landmarks of the sit bones. And when we think about the location of the first chakra, we can draw a line from the two sit bones in toward one another. And that meeting point right there, kind of at the base of our seat, is the base of the seat of the first chakra. So letting our attention drop down and into our pelvis, feeling the weight of our pelvis. And then from that weight, we'll take an inhale, circle sweep the arms out and up. So starting to feel the lightness of the arms as we circle them up. Turn your palms toward the floor, push down through center as you exhale. And then on the inhalation, we'll take a big circle of the arms. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed as you exhale. Breathe out through the mouth. You push down through center toward the seat. We'll do that two more times, moving with your breath. Inhale. Last one. As the hands come down, you might open the eyes. We'll circle our hands behind our back and interlace our fingers. We'll be in the seat for just a little bit longer. So if your legs are talking to you and you need to change your seat, that's perfectly fine. Roll your shoulders down your back as you push down through your uh, knuckles. Hug in through your low ribs, hug in through your belly. And with your exhalation, drop your chin to your chest. From here, we'll roll our right ear toward our right shoulder. And as we exhale, we'll drop our chin to our chest. On the inhale, left ear toward left shoulder. And exhale, chin to chest. We'll do that one more time side to side. You may even open your mouth as you roll out toward your shoulder. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, left ear toward left shoulder. And exhale, chin to chest. 
And slip our head back up, release the interlace of the fingers, circle the arms out and up, letting your gaze lift upward. And then as you exhale, drop the right hand to the floor, let the left arm stretch up and over. Push the floor away, bring yourself up through center, and then exhale, left hand to the floor, right arm up and over. Let's do this a couple times, moving side to side at the pace of your breath particularly as we kind of welcome in that energy of the first chakra, we welcome in the energy of earth, of grounding, of stability, ensuring that we try to keep our breaths long and smooth so that we're not moving into that kind of faster breath that we might associate with the fire element. As we finish this last side, we'll come up through center, reach up through both arms, looking up one more time, and then as you exhale, bend your elbows out to the side and bring your chin toward your chest. We'll stretch our arms up toward the ceiling, looking up on our inhale. And as you exhale, bend your elbows, chin to chest. One more time, see if you can feel a little squeeze of the shoulder blades on the back. Exhale out through the mouth. We'll take our inhale, stretch our arms back up toward the ceiling. And as we exhale, we'll circle our arms down and around. So from here, whatever we're seated on, we can move that off to the side. Um, I know a lot of us might be practicing on carpet, uh, since we're practicing at home, so we don't need knee padding. Um, but as we move around to hands and knees, if you are on a hard floor, consider setting up a blanket or a towel or some knee padding underneath your knees. We'll bring ourselves to a tabletop shape with the hands underneath the shoulders, but we'll walk our knees all the way together to touch. And as the knees come together to touch, you'll start to swing your pelvis from side to side. You might think about a dog wagging its tail as your hips move from side to side depending on your pelvis, on your low back today, how things are feeling. This movement could stay small, or it might start to get a little bit bigger. So again, just kind of noticing, listening, let this be your practice on your body and what your body needs today. And you can either stay with side to side, or we can start to make circles. So next time hips swing left, let your hips go down and back toward your heels. And we might go a little bit further than mine. Bring the hips over to the right, up and forward with your wrists. You're now drawing a big circle with your pelvis. And again, your hips might get closer to your heels. They just don't have any room, <laughs> but you might. Okay, the next time our hips come toward our heels, we'll reverse the direction of our circles. And then the next time that our hips come toward our heels or our hips come to center, we'll start to sit back into child's pose. Some of us will keep our knees together. Many of us will find it more comfortable to widen our knees out. The knees go wide, bring the big toes together behind you as you sit your hips back toward your heels, stretch your arms a little bit further overhead, bring your head toward the floor. May or may not touch. Don't worry about any kind of particular destination with the head. Just see if you can find some softness through the back of your skull or through your jaw. With our next inhalation, we'll push into our hands, bring ourselves back to hands and knees. We'll narrow our knees so that they're underneath our hips or widen our knees out so they're underneath our hips so we're in more of a traditional tabletop. And then we'll just take a few cat-cows. So something that's probably familiar in our bodies, moving at the pace of your breath, using your inhale to tip your heart forward and your exhale to arch your back up toward the ceiling. Okay, noticing range of motion for your body today. My range of motion is a little bit more limited. Yours might be two, or you might be having a very fluid day in your spine. So again, just noticing, checking in, honoring your body, wherever it's at, wherever movement wants to be or not be. Okay, we'll do one more. And then we'll take our inhale, bring ourselves back to neutral. As we come to neutral, let's tuck our toes under, send our hips up and back, coming up into our first downward facing dog. Here we can pedal out the feet, sway the hips, shake out the head, kind of start to listen to what kind of movement would feel good for you. Knowing that if downward dog doesn't feel good in your body today, you can come back to your hands and your knees and do some cat cows. If you need to support your wrists, you could come to dolphin pose, coming out to your forearms and then taking your toes and coming to there. So knowing that there's a couple different places that you can be as we do a little bit of self-exploration in our bodies today. So let's take a couple of breaths longer. So if you're doing anything on one side, you can balance it out between the two sides. Okay, 
And let's take one more inhale here as we exhale. We'll bring ourselves back to our tabletop shape if we went elsewhere. And then from our tabletop, we'll take a step forward with our right foot. So bringing our right foot toward the top of the mat. I've got mine a little bit wide to make space for my belly. Yours could be a little bit closer in if that feels more interesting. Have your hands right inside your uh, foot. So you've got the right kind of pinky finger right to the inner edge of your right big toe side of your foot. And then just start to notice here, coming forward and back a little bit. Uh, where is there movement in the pelvis and the hamstring today? This movement can be really small. It might just be an inch or two in either direction. It might be a lot bigger. You might be rocking back to Ardha Hanumanasana and then coming forward to your lunge. So again, just kind of listening to your body as you start to explore, start to open up this space at the base of the spine and in the hip. And then the next time we come forward into the lunge, we'll pause here. As we pause here, we're looking to have our knee over our heel. If it's going a lot further than that, then we'll just want to make a little bit more space between our front heel and our back knee. From here, we'll bring our right hand onto our thigh, start to rotate our spine. And you can stay with the support of your hand on your thigh, or you can start to lift your right arm up toward the ceiling. So it really depends on, again, where is my shoulder today? What feels interesting? Then taking a couple of deep breaths into the rotation, whether it's smaller or larger. We're not competing with our bodies. We're not trying to make our bodies right or wrong. Just meeting your body where it's at today. Let's take one more inhale here. As we exhale, we'll bring our right hand back down to the inside of our foot. As our right hand comes toward the inside of our foot, we'll plant our palms. Two choices. You can stay in tabletop and bring your right knee back to meet your left, or you can tuck your left toes under and bring your right foot back to meet your left foot, coming toward plank pose. So here we can either be in tabletop, we can be in plank on our knees, or we can be in plank with the legs extended. So taking a moment to find one of those three shapes, push the floor away with your hands, see if you can lift the space between your shoulder blades, and then feel for hugging your belly up and in, bringing your spine a little bit more neutral without lifting your hips up toward the ceiling. And take one more inhale. As we exhale, we'll come to downward facing dog, taking a couple of breaths, pedal out the feet, shake out the head. Again, taking those different variations of downward dog, um, dolphin pose or staying with cat cow if you prefer. And let's take one more inhale. And then with our exhalation, we'll meet back together in our tabletop shape. So you can see the direction you're facing. I just switched sides so you can see the second side more easily. So from here, we'll now bring our left leg forward, bringing it toward the outer edge of our mat. Again, we might come in a little bit closer than my foot, just depends on the space that you need. And we'll start by exploring. So coming a little bit forward, a little bit back, noticing what's there. And again, letting your movement be what matches your body. It might be a little different side to side. So this side, it might stay really small. This side, it might get a lot bigger. Taking a couple of breaths, notice. Oh, what's there on this side? How does this side feel different? Okay, the next time that we come forward for the lunge, we'll stay here. As we stay here, again, looking for alignment of knee over our heel. We'll keep our right hand inside, bring our left hand to our thigh, start that rotation. Notice how that feels. Stay here or lift the arm up. Again, it really depends on your body and where you want to be today. Taking a couple of deep breaths into whatever rotation of the spine feels interesting in your body today. And at the same time, noticing your left foot, noticing your right knee, noticing the connection points between your body and the floor. Let's take one more inhale here. As we exhale, we'll bring our left hand down to the inside of our foot. Again, you can stay on the knee or tuck the back toes, making your way through tabletop or plank pose. And again, we can be in our tabletop shape. We can be in our full plank. We can be on, in plank on the knee. So you pick wherever you're working, push down into the floor, feel the connection, the spread of the fingers, feel that hug and lift the belly up and in. Noticing neutral spine without hips lifting. Let's take one more inhale as we exhale, toes tuck, lift the hips, downward facing dog. A couple of deep breaths in your downward dog. 
or again, whatever modified version of downward dog your body wants today. A couple of deep breaths, noticing how does this feel? What's there? Those of us who had a blanket for knee padding, this would be a great time to move that off to the side. Okay, then if you're not in downward facing dog, consider coming there for just a moment as we start to walk our feet forward to the top of our mat. You'll notice in my body, I need to have my feet nice and wide. Your feet can be hip width apart or even narrower, or they can be even wider than mine. It really depends on your body. If you need some back support today in your forward fold, little bend to the knees, elbows to the thighs. Otherwise, hands might reach the floor or the shins, or we might bring our hands behind our back, interlacing our fingers, or we could take hold of either elbow in front of us. So let this forward fold be what your body needs right now. Listening to what supports your back best, what feels the most interesting through the back of the legs, across the shoulders. We'll take three more breaths here. If you have your hands interlaced behind your back or you're holding either elbow in front of you, let go of that. Walk your hands onto your thighs, soften your knees just a little bit. Start to push into your thighs with your hands, and then begin to arch your back up, kind of like cat as you walk your hands up your legs, rolling up through a reverse, reverse ragdoll as you make your way all the way to stand. And then circle the shoulders up toward the ears, exhale them down the back. Forward and up on the inhale. Exhale out through the mouth. One more time. And so from here, we'll pause in mountain pose. You can stay where you are. I'm just going to turn forward so you can see me. Spin your palms open. Reach down through your fingertips. Let your eyes close or drop your gaze. Take a couple of deep breaths, feeling the legs, feeling the feet. And then let your eyes open, depending on how you're configured um, with your computer. You can stay facing the direction you are. If you find you've now kind of um, turned so you're facing away from you, you might find it easiest to turn to face. Um, but what we'll do is we'll widen one foot out so that we're coming into um, about a two and a half or a three foot stance between the feet. So a little bit wider um, than uh, mat width if we're, if we're standing on either side of a, the short edge of our mat. And we'll bring our heels and our toes out, and we'll take just a second for us to check. As we bend our knees, are our knees tracking toward our second toes? If they're wobbling in, we'll want to bring our feet a little bit closer to parallel. Or if we get here and we feel really wobbly, bringing feet a little closer to parallel, and then keeping the knees in that tracking of the toes. Now we'll do a similar arm movement to what we did at the beginning of practice. So take an inhale, strain your legs, circle your arms out and up. As you exhale, turn your palms toward the floor, push down through center. Circle your arms out and up, straighten the legs, inhale. Exhale as you push down through center. Keep going here with your breath. Remembering again that with that kind of first chakra energy, keep your breath a little bit longer, a little bit smoother. You're not looking for super fast breath. Encouraging breath that's a little bit more stable, a little bit more grounded. Take two more breaths. And last one. Now we'll take our inhale, straighten our legs, circle our arms out and up. As we exhale, we'll circle our arms down. As the arms come down, you can parallel your feet and then heel toe your feet toward one another or hop them together. So from here, if you've got a block, we'll definitely grab our block. If you don't, you might use a blanket. Um, you can take it and fold it in half a couple of times so you've got something a little bit thicker. Um, I don't know how well a soup can might work for that, um, but something that we can take that's pretty firm between our thighs. So we'll move from that kind of expansive leg position now to one that's a little bit more internalized. So you'll take the block or the prop between your thighs. You'll look down at your feet and bring your feet to parallel to one another. They should be about hip width apart. Everybody's body's a little bit different and the props are gonna make it a little bit different. Uh, but around that hip width apart placement. 
And then as we come here, I'll just turn to the side. You'll bring your hands onto your hips. You'll hug the block, and then you'll start to tip your tailbone down a little bit. And you can see probably in my back how that tip of the tailbone down just a little bit lengthens out the low back. You might also feel a little bit more squeeze of the block. And you might notice, maybe not in my body, but in yours, a little hug of the belly in. Okay, so feeling down into the leg line. So feeling that connection from the energy of the first chakra, the base of the spine, moving down through our leg lines. We'll start to bend our knees, and as we bend our knees, we'll try to let our weight go backwards just a little bit toward our seat. So we're moving down and back a little bit more toward chair pose. And then push into your feet, straighten your legs, come back up. As you exhale, squeeze the block as tightly as you can as you sit down and back. We'll do this a couple more times. Notice, as you're sitting down, if your toes start to turn out. If that happens, don't sit down quite so low. Only sit down as low as you can maintain that alignment of your feet. You don't want to be putting extra strain on our knee joints as we come in and out. Some of us are going to be sitting even lower. You might be coming down and back, sitting even lower into your chair pose. And again, a lot of it's just going to be dependent on your body. So what is the feedback I'm getting from my heels? What is the feedback I'm getting from my feet? Okay, the next time that we sit down, we'll send our arms up alongside our ears. Squeeze the block between the thighs, finding your chair pose. Keep squeezing, reach out through your fingertips, take an inhale, exhale, elbows out to the side, squeeze the block or the blanket a little bit more. Arms alongside the ears, inhale. Exhale, squeeze the block between the thighs. Let's do three more, moving with your breath. You can always sit a little, little bit lower, a little bit higher. Last one. Okay, now set your arms, stay in your chair pose. See if it feels available to sit down and back just a little bit more. Hug your belly in. Take an inhale, exhale, sweep the arms back behind you. As your arms come back, you can just reach your arms back behind you or you can take an interlace of your hands behind the back. Push down into your feet, start to straighten your legs. Reach down through your knuckles or reach down and back through your fingertips. Hug your low ribs in, hug your belly in. Tip your chin up toward the ceiling. Squeeze the block or the prop. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, tip the chin up. Exhale, chin to chest. One more time. Inhale, tipping up. And exhale, chin to chest. So release the, the clasp of the hands if you have it. Sweep the arms up toward the ceiling. And then exhale the arms down. As your arms come down, you can take your block Set it more toward the front of your mat. And then we'll grab our blanket or our towel or whatever we might have. And you'll fold it in half a couple times so that you've got something that's about, I don't know what that is, maybe one and a half, two inches thick. Um, so not, not super thick, but thick enough that it's interesting. And when we put it down on the mat, we'll put it about the middle of our mat. We'll want the fringed end or the end that has kind of all the weird folds in it facing away from us so that we've got kind of that clean folded edge closer to us. Once we've got that on our mat, we'll step forward so that our feet are halfway onto the blanket. Feet about hip width apart. The blanket will come in right about the middle of the arch. You'll feel it kind of at the, the bottom of the, bo the ball of the foot. Your heels are down on the floor. Mindful here, especially those of us who tend to hyperextend the joints of not locking out through your knees or hyperextending your knees back behind you. Keep a little micro bend. And then here we'll take an inhale, rise up onto the balls of the feet so you're coming heels off the floor. Exhale as you dip your heels down to tap the mat. Coming up on your inhale and exhale as you lower your heels. Do that two more times. You might notice this becomes a little bit of a balance practice as you come up to balance. One more time. Okay, as the heels come down, now you'll keep your left foot where it is. Step your right foot forward so that it's in front of the blanket. You'll want your feet on kind of train track. So you don't want to be on a balance beam, but you'll want your feet about hip width apart. So kind of like we would have for pyramid pose. Okay, right foot forward, bring your hands onto your hips and then push back into your left heel. And you might start to notice, oh, there's my heel or there's my calf. You might start to feel sensation in the sole of your foot. Take a couple deep breaths here, observing kind of what's happening here in the back of the left leg. 
And then you have some options. So if you feel like I am working at a place that already feels super interesting, I don't need anything else to make this interesting, you could stay right here. You can also play with tipping the kind of front of the right pelvis a little bit more to the right as you push back into the left heel. You might feel a little bit more in the back of your leg as you do that. You also have the option to start to come forward toward pyramid pose. And you can do that with the engagement of the belly, kind of floating and hovering. You can also do it with the support of the hands on the leg, or this is where that block might come in handy, bringing the block just inside your right foot and bringing the hands down onto the block. So really picking where it feels interesting for you. There's not one particular place you need to be. The main place you need to be is, is there interesting sensation? Is my breath still smooth and long? If we find that it's not, then we want to back off a little bit. We might even step out of it for a second, shake out our legs, and then come back in, starting here, and then stepping forward. So again, really just letting your body be the teacher here. Instead of listening to me, I'm obviously guiding you through poses, but I can't see exactly what's happening in your body today. I can't be in your body and know what you're feeling. So you know what you're feeling. You know where it feels the most interesting. So those of us who are down on the block in the pyramid pose, we'll walk our hands to our hips. From hands on hips, we'll have the belly in, coming all the way back up. So when we meet together here, we'll take an inhale. And then as we exhale, we'll step our right foot back, step our left foot off the blanket, take a moment to kind of bounce out through the knees, shake out through the hips. Notice that first side, you might come up and down a couple of times. Maybe you feel a little bit of difference between your left foot and your right foot. And then we'll step our feet back onto the blanket. So we're again about that kind of midline of the foot, feeling into the two sides, feet hip width apart. We'll come up onto the balls of their feet, drop the heels, come up onto the balls of their feet, drop the heels. Two more times. Again, noticing our balance might be a little bit more in play here. Last one. Okay, after that last one, we'll step our left foot forward. As our left foot, fo as our left foot comes forward, again, looking for that train track alignment, not the balance beam, but train track so we have better balance. We've got good support for our low back. And taking a moment to check in here. Side to side may feel different. So this side, we might be getting a lot more feedback from our leg or our heel or our foot. We might be getting less. So be curious about what you feel. And again, noticing as we start to spend a little bit more time here, am I going to stay right here? Am I going to start to tip the, the front part of my left pelvis, tilting it slightly more forward as I push back into my right heel? You might stay here, just work with that. You might keep your hips square and start to tip forward toward pyramid, doing the hovering more active pyramid, hugging belly up and in, or sliding hands down the leg to the um, thigh or the shin, or bringing your hands onto the block. So again, listen to your body. Things might be a little bit different side to side. We always want to try to reach some kind of symmetry, but we obviously can't always do that. The body is not symmetrical um, as much as it might look like it from the outside. And so honoring the feedback that you're getting on this side, and it may be that you do a little bit more or you do a little bit less. Take three more deep breaths, following sensation wherever it is, noticing where we feel it in our body, noticing if we're still connected to those nice, deep, full, long breaths. Okay, and then those of us who are in the pyramid folded forward, start to bring our hands to our hips, hug our belly in. You're going to lift yourself all the way back up. As we all meet upright, we'll take a step back with our left foot, step our right foot off the blanket, shake out the hips, pedal out the feet, come up and down a couple of times, again, just kind of noticing what's there. Okay, so now that we have that, let's clear the blanket out of the way. You might like to keep your block. We'll turn to face the long end of our mat. Um, so if you need to move your um, computer screen and space do that, or perhaps you're already kind of finding that facing one direction is a lot easier for you. So um, face the direction that you have to do the least amount of movement. We'll heel to our feet out again, just like we did for the squat earlier. It might be just a slight bit wider this time. 
And then we'll turn our left toes out. So turning left toes out. As we turn our left toes out, we'll bring our hands onto our hips. And as we exhale, we'll bend our knee. And as we bend our knee, if the knee is going to be on the heel, we'll take our back foot back a little bit further. So we're looking to keep that alignment of knee right over the heel. Then we'll take our inhale, straighten our leg. As we exhale, we'll bend our knee. We'll do this a couple more times. Straightening on the inhale. Bending on the exhale. We'll do three more. You can keep your hands on your hips or extend your arms toward warrior two arms. Last two. One more. Now let's straighten our leg, lower our hands if they're lifted, hands to the hips. As you exhale, start to send the right hip back, tip the left hip in as you move toward a triangle pose shape. On your inhale, you'll come back up, stacking shoulders over hips. Exhale, bend the knee to the warrior two legs. So coming in and out of that, inhale, straighten the leg. Keep the leg straight, exhale as you tip the torso. Come up on your inhale. Exhale to the warrior two leg. One more time. We can add the arms if we want. Inhale, warrior two arms. Straight leg, exhale. Tipping the hand down, back arm up. Inhale as you come back up. As soon as we exhale, we'll pause and pull warrior two. So it could be warrior two hands on hips. It could be warrior two arms extended. You might sink down into your legs just a little bit more, noticing what's there now that we've spent a little time moving in and out. And feeling into that area at the base of the pelvis. Feeling perhaps a little bit of spaciousness, spaciousness there as our front knee and back leg move away from one another. We'll take an inhale as we exhale, we'll straighten our front leg. Again, we can keep our arms reaching out or bring our hands to our hips as we start to move toward triangle pose. And you can move to triangle pose with front hand on fly, back hand on hip, or arms extended. And we'll pause here, noticing where it feels best to have your gaze. You could look down. You could look forward, you could look up. And again, that back hand might continue to stay on your hip. Let's take one more inhale as we exhale. We'll reach back through our right arm, bring ourselves all the way back up. As you exhale, pivot your left foot parallel to your right. Heel to your feet in about halfway, so you're slightly wider than hip width apart with your feet. Bring your hands onto your hips and start to draw a circle with your pelvis. You might imagine that you've got a hula hoop that you're using that will stay up even if you circle really slowly, and then we'll reverse the direction. And let's release those circles. Heel to our feet back out. So again, we're coming to that slightly wider stance. This time we'll turn our right toes out. As we turn our right toes out, hands on the hips. We'll take an inhale. As we exhale, we'll bend our knee. So first round, just checking for the alignment. So if this knee is going beyond our heel, more space, or we don't sit down quite so low. Okay, so once we've got that alignment set, we'll take an inhale, straighten our front leg. Exhale, bend our knee. Inhale, straighten. And exhale, bend. We'll do three more. If you want to, you can add the arms. Arms stretch out. Exhale, knee bends. Two more times. Last one. And now we'll take an inhale, straighten our leg, bring our hands back to our hips. As we exhale, we're tipping into that kind of triangle shape with our upper body. Hands are still on hips though. Inhale as you tip yourself back up. Exhale, bend your knee. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale as you tip. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, knee bends. So we might add our arms. Inhale, arms extend, leg straightens. Exhale, tipping into your triangle. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, knee bends. Inhale, leg straightens. Exhale to tip. Inhale, and exhale, knee bends. 
last round. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, tip. Inhale, back up. And exhale, hold, warrior two. I'm pausing here as we hold. Again, we can have our arms extended. We can have hands on hips. Feeling into sensation in the legs. Sensation in the base of the spine. Noticing the connection of the feet in particular with the floor. Especially after all that work we just did opening up the feet. Can we be curious about whether or not our toes could be a little bit lighter? Let's take one more inhale, one more exhale. And as we inhale, we'll straighten our front leg. Now preparing for triangle pose. So we can keep back hand on hip, front hand on thigh, or we can stretch both of our arms out to the warrior two shape. As we exhale, we'll start to move toward our triangle pose. So finding that position of triangle pose that feels interesting for you. Again, noticing with the feet, is there any kind of gripping or holding with the toes? Can my toes be a little bit lighter? Can I feel a little bit more spaciousness through the soles of my feet, through the opening that we did with the blanket? And again, letting your gaze go wherever it feels best for your neck, your jaw, your face. Let's take one more inhale as we exhale. We'll make our way back up. Your arms are lifted. Lower your arms. Parallel your front foot to your back foot. Heel toe, heel toe. Bring your feet back in. As the feet come back in, we'll bring ourselves back into a little bit more stability after the spaciousness. So grabbing your block or your rope blanket, we'll come back to our chair pose. And you can stay facing the side of your mat if you want to, or if it feels more comfortable to turn toward the long edge of the mat, that's fine. So just like we did earlier, I'll turn it to the side so you can see. We'll take an inhale, look down at your feet, make sure they're parallel. Exhale, bend your knees sitting down. Let your weight go a little bit more toward your heels, a little bit more toward your seat. Push into your feet, straighten your legs, coming up. Exhale, bend your knees, sitting down. One more like that, inhale. And now as we exhale and sit down, we'll send our arms up alongside our ears. Okay, this time we'll take an inhale. Exhale, sweep your arms down and back behind you. Arms come forward and up on the inhale. As we exhale, we might squeeze the block a little bit more as our arms go back. Inhale forward. And exhale back. One more like that. Inhale. And exhale. As your arms go back, take your hands, reach them back behind you, or take the interlace behind the back. Hug the belly in. Push your weight toward your heels. You might sit a little bit lower. We'll take one more inhale. As we exhale, start to straighten our legs. Then we're going to tip ourselves forward. I cannot go forward any further with a block between my thighs, so I'm going to move mine out of the way. But you can keep your block. You might have to scoot it back just a little bit as you tip forward. Or again, you can take it out of the way. Taking a couple of deep breaths, reach up through your knuckles, or you can have your hands interlaced on your back, lifting through your elbows if that feels better. Let's take one more inhale. On our exhale, we'll start to unwind our arms for the floor. So we unwind our arms for the floor. We'll begin to bend our knees, drop our seat, coming back up to our chair pose one more time with that block between the thighs if we still have it. We'll take an inhale, exhale, straighten the legs, lower the arms down. See so arms come down, roll out through your shoulders a couple of times. And then if you still have a block between your legs, take that out of the way. So from here, we're going to work just a little bit with half moon pose. So you'll set the block up at the top of your mat. Take it a little bit more toward the left corner of your mat. As we set that up, we'll turn to face the side of our mat one more time. We'll heel to our feet out, just like we did earlier when we were moving in and out of our warrior two and our triangle pose. We'll spin our left toes out so that our left toes are facing toward the block. We'll bend our knee, come toward our warrior two shape. Now I know we're practicing at home now, so we're in a slightly different space than we're used to. In the studio, we've got a little bit more room, um, so we should be really careful of what's around you. Um, it's a lot easier to bonk into bookcases and couches and lamps and things that we might not know are there. So being mindful as we start this transition. Okay, so from here, you might heel toe your back foot in just a little bit. As you start to come forward, hand lands on the block. We want the block to be right underneath our shoulder. So you might have to move it away from your foot a little bit more. Start to lift your right leg up, flex your foot, right hand on your hip, 
Use your hand on your hip to help roll you open. You can also do this if you have a wall nearby. You can come up to a wall and use a wall. It's a lot more stable, particularly if we feel really wobbly. Um, so know that a wall is an option. You can keep your hand on your hip or reach your right arm up toward the ceiling. Noticing as we hold the shape for a couple more breaths, where we feel that similarity to triangle pose. How does this shape feel somewhat similar? But how can we also notice the strength of our standing left leg? Push out through your right heel, keep reaching, reaching, reaching. We'll take one more inhale here, right arm is lifted, bring your right hand to your hip, start to soften your left knee, step it back. Coming out, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, heel toe, heel toe, bring your feet to that hip width apart, and then just give your hips a little shake out from side to side. So now we'll move our block over to the right side of our mat. In a back right corner, we want it a little bit off center line because the hand will be slightly back, uh, slightly kind of back behind the right foot. We'll heel toe the feet out again, setting up that wider stance to be your right toes out. Okay, bend the knee coming toward that warrior two shape. So before you move toward balance, taking a moment just to feel what the standing kind of right leg is going to feel like already here as you connect with your foot. And we might heel to our back foot in a little bit. We can even bring our left hand onto our hip. As we start to come forward, right hand finds the block. Look for the block to be right underneath your shoulder. So if it's in really close to your toes, you're constantly kind of tipping forward over it. If it's further out from the shoulder than you're reaching for, and you don't have the stability of having the stack of shoulder, uh, elbow, and wrist right on top of the block. Use your left hand to roll your hip open a little bit more. Flex your left foot, push out through your heel. Option to lift the left arm if that feels interesting. Take a couple more deep breaths, send it down into the right leg. And let's take one more inhale. If our left arm is lifted, we'll exhale our hands to our hip. Start to soften our right knee, step our left foot back. As we land, we can straighten the right leg, parallel the feet. And then heel toe, heel toe, bring your feet back to about hip width apart. One more time, just kind of shimmying out through your hips, rolling out through your shoulders. And then we'll pause, finding mountain pose. Spin your palms open. Let your gaze drop or let your eyes close. Bring your awareness particularly to the bottom of the pelvis, down through the legs, down through the feet and into the floor. And notice what the sensation is that you're experiencing there. Do the legs feel any kind of energy, any tingling, any temperature change? Do you notice your feet on the floor more? Do you notice the sensation of your legs more? Just being curious about that energy that we generated in the lower pelvis and the legs that connect us to the earth. Okay, with our next inhale, we'll blink our eyes open. You can clear any movements on your mat. So if you still have your block on your mat, move that out of the way. And then you'll come back up to the top of your mat, wherever that is. I know that um, in home practice, uh, front and back get a little bit different, but coming toward whatever is the top of your mat, we'll stretch our arms up one more time. As we exhale, we'll bend our knees, sitting down into chair pose. Now we don't have the block, but we want to imagine that it's still there. So it's keeping us from dropping our knees together. It's keeping us from letting our knees spin open and our feet spin open. Feet are parallel, knees are the same line as our feet. Hug your belly in as you sink your hips down and back a little bit further, sitting a little bit lower into your chair pose. Take one more inhale, exhale the hands to the thighs, start to straighten the legs as you fold forward. Again, I just need to make a little bit more room, you might too. And we'll walk our hands back up onto our shins, lengthen our spine, nice long spine. Exhale, bring the hands to the mat. You can walk, step, or hop back into plank pose. Plank can look like this, plank can look like this. Push the floor away. Noticing now different connection to the floor. We can now feel the spread of our fingers, the spread of our palms, 
maybe some of that same sensation that we found in our feet and our balance poses, we're now feeling it in our hands. Push the floor away, hug the belly in. Take one more inhale, exhale, tuck the toes if they're not already, lift the hips, come back into your downward facing dog. Let's cuddle out the feet, shake the hips, and again, notice. This is sometimes a pose that feels a little bit more familiar for a lot of bodies. Notice what you're feeling now after all that work in your legs and how it might feel different for you. But be curious about downward dog, be curious about what you're experiencing in feet, calves, hamstrings. You might also shake out your head, yes, no. Open your mouth and yawn. One more inhale as we exhale. One more time to plank pose. Knees up, knees down. You choose. Push the floor away. Hug the belly in. We'll take one more inhale. This is the one place that I can't go with you. So I'll just talk you through it as you exhale. Hug your elbows in. Lower yourself all the way down onto your belly. When you come onto your belly, stack your palms underneath your head. Lower your head down to the back of your hands. Take a couple of deep breaths and just feel yourself spread out on the floor. Notice, could I feel my shoulders getting a little bit heavier? Could I feel my tongue getting a little bit heavier? Could I feel my eyes in the eye sockets getting a little bit heavier? So feeling into that weight of the body sinking down toward the floor. Okay, and with your legs extended, start to push into the tops of your feet. And as we push into the tops of our feet, we'll start to notice, could I feel a lengthening of my tailbone toward my heels? So even on your belly, you're feeling just a little bit of length of tailbone toward heels. You might feel a little bit longer in your low back. You might feel your belly engage a little bit, almost like your belly button is trying to peel itself up off the floor. Yeah. And then with your, with your um, hands down on the floor, elbows down on the floor, take an inhale. Keep pushing to your feet, tailbone reaching back, start to lift just your head. So your head's going to come off the back of your hands, and then exhale it back down. Inhale as you come up, and exhale back down. One more time like that, inhaling up, and exhaling back down. Now we'll do three more rounds. You have the option now to stay with that, or inhale, lift the hands, lift the elbows off the floor, the head comes up with them, and exhale it back down. Two more times, inhale it up, and exhale it down. Last one, and back down. As you come back to the floor, feel yourself spread out into the floor. Feel the weight of your arms go, feel the weight of your shoulders go. Let go of any activation of your legs. Bend your knees so your feet are up toward the ceiling and take a little windshield wiper of your knees from side to side. Do you feel balance in that side to side movement? Slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Hug your elbows in, take an inhale, pushing yourself up through hands and knees. And we'll widen our knees, bring our big toes together behind us as we sit our hips back into child's pose. Taking a moment to breathe some breaths into our low back, into our back body. We might also bring our attention back to the landmark of the two sit bones. Feeling into that space between the two sit bones, maybe noticing a little bit more space there. As we take our breath down into the region of the first shoulder. And with our next inhalation, we'll bring ourselves up and forward one more time, lowering down onto our bellies. As we come onto our bellies, just arriving on our bellies long enough that we can turn over and roll over onto our backs. So as you come onto your back, noticing your relationship to the floor once again, you can have your knees bent or your legs out straight, depending on what feels most comfortable for you. Okay, and then noticing again our relationship to the floor. So feeling our body as it sinks down into the floor, feeling the weight of the shoulders, the weight of the tongue, the weight of the eyes. And if our knees are bent, we'll stretch our legs out straight. As the legs stretch out straight, you'll bring your arms up overhead. Okay, so reach out through your arms, reach out through your legs. 
Actually, I'm going to come to standing. So if you need to look at the screen, you can just imagine that I'm lying on the ground and you'll be able to see kind of what we're doing here. So we're reaching through arms, reaching through legs. And then you'll take your right leg and you'll open it out toward the right corner of your mat. So you've got your right leg out a little bit wider. Then you'll take your left leg and keep it straight. Cross your left ankle over your right. So everything's coming over to the right side of the mat. The legs are straight. Then you'll grab your left wrist and start to lean yourself over to the right. So you're making this whole kind of banana shaped C curve so that your hands are moving out toward the right corner of the mat and your feet are moving out toward the right corner of the mat. All of this is happening on your back. And with your next inhalation, Start to bring your arms, your head back to center first, arms reaching up overhead. Unhook your left ankle, bring your left foot out toward the left corner of your mat. Take your right ankle, cross it over the left ankle, legs stay straight. Then you'll grab your right wrist and take that C curve over to the left side of your mat. So your body becomes this kind of banana shape over to the left. So taking two more deep breaths on that side. And then unwinding the legs, unwinding the arms, reach the arms back, reach the legs out, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, bend your knees, bring your feet onto the floor, setting your feet hip width apart. If you want the block like we had it for chair pose earlier between the thighs, you can bring it in for bridge pose. We'll take an inhale here, arms are overhead, knees are bent, heels underneath knees, exhale, push into the feet, lift the hips up, arms come down. Inhale, lower your hips, bring your arms overhead, it's a little bit different breath than we're used to. Exhale, push into your feet, arms come down, hips come up. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Now I'll take our inhale, bring our hips down, arms overhead. On your exhalation, bring the right knee into the chest. Hands can take hold of the knee as you pull the knee in. We can stay right here or slide our left leg forward, extending out through our left leg. We can stay here or take our left arm back alongside our left ear. So just getting a little bit longer again through that left side. Take one more inhale, exhale, left hand back to the knee if it's overhead. Slide your left heel in, bring the right foot down. Pull the left knee in, knee toward chest. And then again, we could stay here. We could slide our right leg out. Flex the right foot if the right leg is extended. Stay here, we're taking the right arm back alongside the ear. Couple deep breaths on this side, noticing how it feels different. If our right arm is overhead, we'll bring our right hand back in. If our right leg is out straight, we'll bring our right foot to the floor. This time, we'll bring our right knee in, bringing it in to meet our left. Our knees can be together or wide. Give yourself a little rock from side to side here. Noticing the um, consistency of your low back as it presses down into the floor. Noticing bigger movement, smaller movement feels more interesting. Some of us will widen our knees, moving toward happy baby pose. You can keep your knees uh, bent or you can stack your feet over your knees taking hold of the back of the thighs or the shins. Some of us may reach up and grab the feet and we may keep that little rock from side to side going. As you take a couple more breaths here, notice is there anything else that my body needs right now? So really taking this opportunity. First chakra is also an opportunity to reconnect to our physical bodies. Um, and really bring us more deeply into our physicality. Is there anything else that my body really needs right now? Any movement, any shape, anything that feels like it didn't quite get the attention it needed? Feel free to take a minute or so with last little movements that might feel good for you. And for some of us, what might feel good is a nice long Shavasana. So if you are ready for Shavasana, you can also let go of your legs, extend your legs out, bring your arms down at your sides. But taking the opportunity for as much or as little time as you'd like to find that movement that your body is wanting. Okay, if 
you're taking out, taking any movement, consider balancing out anything that you're doing that's single-sided, if you haven't already. And whether you're in Shavasana now or you're still kind of on your way there, once you do arrive in Shavasana, take a couple of deep breaths and start to notice the back of the body. So feel the weight of your back of the back of your body. Notice your shoulder blades, notice your arms, notice your pelvis, notice your heels, notice the weight of your legs, and see if you can feel into that sense of kind of gravity pulling you down toward the floor. You might even feel your lower jaw separate a little bit from your upper jaw. Feel the sensation of the back of your skull as it drops back and down into the floor behind you. And then take a couple of deep breaths, just feeling into that settling, feeling into that energy of grounding, of stability, of support, of foundation. like the earth. When the rain comes, the earth has only to open herself up to the rain. Allow the rain of teachings to come in and penetrate the seeds that are buried deep in your heart. A teacher cannot give you the truth. The truth is already in you. You only need to open yourself, body, mind, and heart so that the teachings will penetrate your own seeds of understanding and enlightenment. If you let the words enter you, the soil and the seeds will do the rest. So please begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, gradually returning movement back to the body. Letting those movements be slow and luxurious, keeping yourself at the peace of earth. Encouraging your body to remain at this, at this pace as you move on into the rest of your day. And gradually those bigger movements might roll you to your side where you might like to land for a couple of breaths before making your way up to a comfortable seat. you arrive in your seat, if you feel comfortable, bring your hands to your heart. Taking a moment to kind of hold whatever seeds are there inside your heart space. Perhaps they've been watered a bit through your practice, through your breath today. Perhaps you're still figuring out what seeds are there. Taking a moment to honor those, honoring yourself, honoring your practice. We offer up the fruits of our practice to the benefit of all beings everywhere, that they may be happy and free from suffering. Loka, Samasta, Tsukino, Avanti. And finally, bowing to our own hearts, we acknowledge the light that resides inside each one of us. 